Hello everybody! In today's video I'm finally going to show you how to break down a Stanley plane. I was looking at my pile thinking what to do, what to do, when it finally dawned on me that I haven't done the most basic video of all. I was thinking back to the day when I broke down my first plane and I had absolutely no idea what I was doing. I took it for granted that everybody knew how to break down a plane but it's not necessarily that simple. There are a lot of makers of bench planes. Stanley was the most prolific. And there are two designs. It's the Bailey design and the Bedrock design. In the back is a Bedrock 606 and in the front are two Bailey design number 4's. I chose two number 4's because there is a subtle difference in the design. This one right here you can see underneath the depth adjustment knob there's a frog adjustment screw. Let me see if I can point to it. It's right there. The oldest planes that Stanley made didn't have a frog adjustment screw. And this one right here is a war production Stanley plane. It also does not have the frog adjustment screw. I'm going to set this war production plane aside and let's break them down. But just a minute, I can't just jump right into the breakdown. That'd be like my regular videos. Let's take a look at the tools required. From left to right, a hammer, center punch, and three different size screwdrivers, all flat tip. Screwdrivers are important having the right size. If everything goes well, that's all you're going to need. If it doesn't go so well, you're going to need a pair of vice grips and you're going to need a torch. The first thing I'm going to do is remove the front knob. The front knob is held in place with a knob bolt and a knob nut. The screwdriver has to fit nice and tight in that knob nut slot. As you can see that one there is a good fit because I'm not holding on to it. When you remove that knob bolt, you want to hold down on the knob so it doesn't turn. Push down into the screw slot so your screwdriver doesn't slip until it starts to turn free and go ahead and spin it out. It's a counterclockwise turn. Now these sometimes you just wiggle them back and forth and they'll start to turn out and that's it. If it doesn't turn out freely you resort to your vice grips, lock it on the center and give it a turn she'll come out. I'm going to use the bolt to push the nut out, repeat the same thing on the bedrock. And the next part coming off will be the lever caps. The lever cap does exactly what it says. It is a lever. The lever is right here. It locks your iron in place. Pull up on the lever, remove the lever cap. The next thing to remove is the plain iron and the iron cap. Right now they're held together, going to come off as one piece. To remove the iron and the iron cap, you just lift them up over this cap screw right here. That's all there is to it. I flipped the plain iron and the iron cap over to see the back side and you can see the plain iron screws. That plain iron screw is what holds the plain iron and the iron cap together. And just like we did with the knob bolt, you want to make sure you select the screwdriver that fits that screw perfectly, otherwise you could strip them out if they're in there tight. Most of the time you can remove this iron screw just by holding it in place with your bare hand. Sometimes you got to lock the iron and the iron cap in a vise in order to give you more leverage to turn on the screw. Push down, turn counterclockwise, and with a proper fit screwdriver, out she comes. With the iron screws removed, you can separate the iron from the iron cap and that part is done. The next thing I want to take out is the cap screws. Any kind of luck, you can turn them out with your fingers. If not, screwdriver and sometimes that bedrock there in the back, it looks like it might take some heat to get that one out. So the number four is nice and loose. The bedrock, I already know that's not going to turn with my fingers. For the bedrock, I selected the screwdriver that fits. I tapped it with a hammer. As you can see, it is a proper fit. Now we're going to see if I can get that screw out. You want to hold that plane down. Keep pressure on the screw. Man, that one's not going to turn. On the Bailey design planes, the next thing I would normally do is remove the frog. The bedrock, you can't do that until you get the tote out of the way. So I'm going to remove the tote on both the Bailey and the bedrock. Both of these totes are held in place with a tote bolt and nut. It's only the number 5 size planes and larger that have the tote screw. You want to swing your ladder out of the way. Make sure you've got a firm grip on your plane. 
screwdriver fit firmly down into the slot turn counterclockwise get a hold of that tote now so it doesn't wiggle back and forth and run that nut all the way off sometimes the bolt comes out with it either way this one did not oh it did there we go so we're good sometimes to get the nuts off you gotta lock them in a vise you should use a vise with jaws that doesn't have teeth now lock it down tight so it won't slip make sure the screwdriver fits dead center in the slot and there she goes it's free on this bedrock you can see from the tote I'm guessing that the bolt in here is probably bent and when they are sometimes they don't come out quite as easy this this tote don't give up on it yet I've repaired them when they've looked a lot worse so get the nut there's the nut and the bolt and then you want to get the tote screw that's it you want to take that bolt over to hard flat surface roll it around and find the high spot tap it down and then I just continue to roll it just like that now that bolt is straight next I'm going to remove the frog screws and washers from the Bailey plane I'm using a properly fit straight slot screwdriver I'm going to hold the plane firmly put pressure down on the screw and turn counterclockwise I'm starting both of them with a straight slot screwdriver it's a little bit wide it bumps the size of the frog once I got them started I'm going to a narrower screw or I'm sorry narrow screwdriver and turning both screws out and just lift the frog up off the base the frog screws for the bedrock frog come in from the back side underneath the depth adjustment knob you've got the frog adjustment screw in the center and the frog screws are on the left and the right I can't overstress the importance of a properly fit screwdriver you can see that one right there is being held in place I tapped it with a hammer seated it in and that hammer tapping on the screws is going to help loosen them up if they're stuck at all this is where I cross my fingers and hope holding down a plane push it forward on the screw oh yeah she's not moving whoop there it goes okay that's one back her all the way out I've taken hundreds of these bedrock planes apart so far I've only had to use heat on one to get the frog screws out that was a four and a 604 and a half that's it both the screws are out the pointy end of those frog screws fit into some indents right here on these frog pins you got a frog pin on the left and a frog pin on the right now that the frog screws are removed I should be able to work this frog free from the base I'm rocking it and lifting up and hopefully those pins aren't rusting in there there we go I'd say I'm lucky that that one came apart as easy as what it did there's a few years of neglect going on there the next thing I'm going to do is remove both of these frog adjustment screws the Bailey is going to turn by hand look at that that's the way they should be and I can tell just from looking at the bedrock that it's not going to be that easy so I've locked it in my vise I've got the toe sitting firmly down on the metal part of my vise. You should have also noticed that I've got wooden jaw faces so I don't mess up the plane. I've got the wide fitting screwdriver. Ha <laughs> ha! She turned, no heat. I'm happy about that. Never going to see that one again. And I'm surprised that that frog adjustment screw came out without using heat look at it it's been neglected let's see if I can have the same luck with the cap screw I've locked it in the vise but I don't have the underside metal to metal contact so it won't be as easy I've got a good tight fitting screwdriver bearing down hard and there she goes 
Got it out. Next is the brass adjusting nuts and they don't always come off easy. I have had to use heat on these adjusting nuts. Now these are counterclockwise so you got to turn clockwise to take them off and counterclockwise to put them back on. There's one and this is the rusted one. I didn't put any lube on it. See, so you gain a little, you back it off, you gain a little. I'm running it all the way back down. Putting some lube on. Coming back up. Lefty righty. Almost past the point of no return. There we go. Now if you're doing that with vice grips, you want to make sure you don't gnarl this thing up. Got it. Next is the frog adjustment plates and screws. Sometimes those screws will come out real easy without a fight. Other times they won't. When they don't, you lock it in the vise. These screws are identical on the bedrock and the bailey. And she's free. And it's on to the bedrock. As you can see, this one doesn't look near as good. And the angle to the screw isn't the same. Because I am nowhere near coming straight on into that screw. Not going to happen. So I moved over to my other vise and it's time to apply some heat. You don't want to apply it on the screw, you want to apply the heat to what the screw goes into. I'm going to hold this on here for at least a minute or so. I'm going to cut away and then come back when this part is done. Now that the heat's been applied, we're going to try this again. Not good news. The head of the screw broke off. That's only happened to me once before. So I'm going to apply more heat, tapping directly on the screw, frog adjustment plate, hacksaw to try to make a new screw slot, smaller screwdriver to fit the new screw slot in half of the head, about a thousand people crossing their fingers, <laughs> look at that, she's turning, that thing's going to be hot. There it is. And that was a success. Look at that. The next thing I'm going to do is remove the Y adjustment levers. These levers are held in place with a pin that goes through the side right there. I'll be tapping them out with that punch and a hammer. I suspect this bedrock will be the harder of the two given the amount of rust that it's got. I apologize that it's hard to see. There, hear that sound? Look at that. All the way out. And that's it. Both of these old planes are completely broken down and ready to be restored. And that was a video I should have done a long time ago. Breaking them down isn't as easy as what it looks on my videos. There are a lot of important things that you need to do. And hopefully you learned some tricks today while watching what I did. I'm kind of glad that screw broke because that happens once in about a thousand planes and now you can see that you don't have to give up on that frog, it can be fixed. Well, I hope you enjoyed the video. Please give me a thumbs up if you like it. But that's it for today. Back to the pile to see what's next, but until then it's time for supper. Bye.